Yeah, I'm not sure uh, what this one is really about, but let's go ahead and give it a solid narrating. Uh, this is going to be the story of Vault 120. Vault 120. Each person in the vault is confined to an apartment, which is actually a cell that cannot ever be opened by any means. Each cell contains everything needed for survival and entertainment, more or less tiny personal vaults. Each of these cells is put in a grid formation flanked by four other cells, which in turn are flanked by four others. Inside each cell are four holes, one in each wall. The holes are the size of a human head and placed at growing level, which allows the people inside the joining cells to talk, touch each other, or even have sex or exchange anything which can fit through the hole. <laughs> this is my hole. It was made just for me. Ugh, jeez. Each 10 days, a sophisticated series of mechanized levers make all the rooms shift and change places. Which cell is placed next to which is always completely random. A brief siren warns the vault dwellers of the incoming change in rooms to ensure no one is accidentally hurt when rooms change. If a cell ends up in the outer grid, it may have either one wall where there might otherwise be a hole, or two walls if the cells end up in a corner. Either way, it still always borders either three or two other cells. Somehow, Baby lands in the cell of Hannibal Lecter level of sadist. Man spends days tormenting a woman with the baby in mind games. Finally eats the baby but keeps the head. Day of the great cell migration. At the last possible minute, puts the head through the hole into the woman's cell. Now what? Everyone hears about this. Whenever they see the Hannibal guy, they shit through the holes. People start spreading lies. Everyone shitting into each other's chambers. People place their asses in front of the holes during a shift so they can take a shit on their new neighbor. Others wait with their fists cocked back to punch people in the ass right as the shift happens. A guy punches too hard. He gets his hand stuck in the other guy's ass. Ten days pass. The hand is still stuck. But man is having serious health issues from not being able to shit for so long. The shift happens. Guy loses his hand. Guy with the fist in his ass runs over to his new neighbor and shits an entire fist into his room, as well as the rest of the shit that have been clogging up. People stick the severed hand up their asses, wait 10 days, and shoot the fist at the next shift. No one knows when they too will be shit fisted. Shit fisting becomes a tradition in the vault. Years pass. Eventually, the guy with the one hand will be reunited with his shit-stained fist. The man who lost his hand gets a piece of sharp glass from a friend, ties it to a stump with a cloth, makes it his duty to shank the asses of all assholes, listening to the gossip through the holes to find his targets, becomes known as the Mad Fister. The Mad Fister is on an ass-devastating quest to find his fist, shanks many assholes and tears prostates in twain, slowly but surely learns the relative locations of those who have shat the shit fist. After five years of shanking assholes, he finds his original fist, coated in petrified shit. The mad fister's room shifts. He looks through each of the holes. He sees a man with something lodged in his ass. It's his hand. Hey, you motherfucker, give me my fucking hand back. Your hand? Buddy, I got this hand in my ass. It's fucking mine. It's mine, you son of a bitch. Give it back. For ten days, the man teases the mad fister. On the final day, he shit fists someone else. He presses his ass against the mad fister's hole. <laughs> what are you gonna do now? <laughs> the mad fister shoved his arm so far up the guy's ass that it ripped through him. He pulls his arm out. The siren goes off. Oh, oh no, I'm, I'm bleeding. The guy falls down, his face upwards towards the hole. The mad fister shifts on his face right as the room shifts. One day he'll get his fist back. Rooms shift. Hey, hey, come over here. You're not gonna shit on me, are you? No, I'm not, I swear. You just gotta listen. Okay, what is it? The Mad Fister. What about him? He's gone. What? I haven't seen him in so long. He has to be gone. 
Bullshit. No one leaves. He's gone, I swear it. You lying shit. There's gotta be a way out of here. You're insane. Please, I'm not crazy. He had to have gotten out. And why is that? Four men. They just keep shitting. They just kept shitting all over my room. I, I had my son with me and, and he was laying down and, and he was sick and Mad Fister wasn't there to help us. Not like last time. Oh God, I, that's why he has to be gone. He has to be gone. Yeah, he escaped, definitely. After some girl has put her ass into shit into my block, I pull with force to block her in, keep her stuck and use her as a sex slave. One day, after fun time, as I'm zipping up, I look behind me through the other hole. The glass-handed man is staring at me, intense hatred in his gaze. He's drawing a portrait of me. Feet first, hands raised, and it might be possible. You may need some lube in the complete trust of a stranger. Would be scary as fuck, though. Be a guy who befriends another guy. Guys get skinny and slip into another man's hole. That's... That's phrasing. That's really bad phrasing. Eventually, the two do this again. Starving men bring saved food. This continues until it's a group made up of six skinny faggots. Skinny fuckers turn into psychopaths. They enter women's cells while they sleep, overpower them, and use her as a sex slave. People are beginning to wonder how he got seven people into one cell. Skinny gangs form. Skinny wars occur. Skinnies are molesting, killing, eating each other. Shitters aren't even a problem anymore. So everyone fears a group of skinnies will come from the hole when they are sleeping and cut their throat. Skinnies, skinny singular, are the people who broke down and couldn't take it. Rather than offing themselves, they willingly starve themselves until near anorexic, trying to force themselves through the holes breaking or dislocating bones in the process while becoming better and better at it. Not truly evil, but longing for human contact. People who see them are naturally so disgusted and frightened that they either attack them or flee from them. Both causes the skinnies to go apeshit on them, tearing off their skin, raping, stealing babies to raise like themselves, that sort of thing. It's a self-fulfilling us versus them scenario. Most of the skinnies were slash are female, because of their already small frames lending itself better to contortion. While physically weak, they are very fierce, and prefer to only attack sleeping people, making it a nightmare to be stuck next to a skinny. You have to be awake for the duration of 10 days with your eyes peeled on the holes. Yeah, you nailed it. Skinnies also have greater will, which gives them the edge. Skinnies usually don't wear clothes since every inch matters, but they lay in their nest because they do not have any way to keep warm. They get skinny. Here's how most skinnies start. Two people are friendly and don't want to leave. They turn skinny just so they can have a roommate and be together with them. Unfortunately, the food system only allows enough to sustain one person. Skinnies form strong bonds with their roommates and convince them to turn skinny. It turns into a, it's them or us. And most skinnies have no choice but to either kill someone in a cell or go into an abandoned cell and search for food. They don't need the kill, but they mostly do so because the original vault dweller would most likely not give up his food and can easily overcome the skinny. Skinnies are what their name implies. They can dislocate shoulders and repop them back and we can even do that now, but most importantly, skinnies have extreme willpower and control over their bodies. The skinnies would eventually kill everyone since they can freely traverse the cells without restraint. There's nothing saying they can't just climb through every single cell and eventually stumble on yours. Also, as they grow more in number and their victims grew less plentiful, they start expanding anyway. So you could very well go to sleep next to three empty rooms and awaken with a hundred skinnies screaming in the distance with every scream being one cell closer. You'd never sleep well again and you wouldn't be able to sleep more than a few hours without having to get up to check your surroundings. Unless we keep this going by finding a way to kill the skinnies and introduce a new species. You wake up hearing screams from the adjacent room to yours 
As you look through the hole, you can see a skinny tearing out the throat of your neighbor. It whips its head to look at you, its tiny yellowish eyes boring into your skull. With a hiss, it scatters into the cell it likely came from. You can still see the two yellow orbs in the dim light beyond the cell with your dead neighbor. They are physically weak and only attack when you are sleeping. It'll come for you for sure if you sleep. It's day one of ten. One woman promises oral to any guy who glory holds into her cell. Ends up somehow restraining his cock and balls to the hole and preventing him from removing it. Spends the next few days doing cock and ball torture on the guy. Real sadist shit like mutilation, fire stuff, branding, needles, etc. As the siren sounds, tells the guy to say goodbye to his babies. Plays with his mutilated manhood until the cells shift and the guy's stuff gets taken off. Repeats with the next group. Battle plan. Work out. Make spears. Make nets to catch shit. Tell everyone I deem worthy how to make spears. Try my hardest to kill people who shit in my cell one at a time. Collect heads for imitation purposes. Collect babies to trade for items. Make crazy gripping devices to loot dead body cells. Loot forks, clothes, cloth, wooden chairs. Kill people who shit. Train people who don't shit. Never trust anyone. Advise the innocent ones to not trust anyone as well. Try to help the weak. If I somehow come across a kid, I'll train him to kill shitters, like me. Make shit catching nets out of empty cell materials. Trade shit for more materials. Try to make a cloth that can somehow spill food on the floor so mothers with little food can get it. If a dead baby gets in my cell, I... Okay, uh... God, I don't want to, but I either cut it up or eat it so I can go into the toilet. I think he means cut it up so he can flush it. I don't know. Fucking, I wish he... Just write, write stuff better. <laughs> Man up and clean my cell. Try my hardest to remain calm. Always wash gloves. Close after. Death to all shitters. Beware. You shit in my cell and you get this in your anus. Be on your bed dying. Too much shit in your room. You caught something. The rooms shift. Good morning, my son. You turn your head over. It's a man dressed in what looks like a ripped up old priest robe. You look ill, my son. Are you okay? You just look at him. Would you... Would you want me to give you your last rites? Say nothing. At least confess your sins. Let me help you. You look at him more with your weakened eyes. I don't believe in that kind of stuff. Sometimes, I myself have doubt. Nine days pass. The priest talks to you as if you are one of his closest friends. You don't believe what he believes. But you are impressed by how lovingly he holds his beliefs. You feel better because of it. Okay, I'll confess my sins. Um, okay, how, how's it go? B bless me, Father, for I have sinned. It has been... I have no idea how long it's been since my last confession. You say everything you can. He listens but does not judge. The siren goes off. I absolve you from your sins. Go in peace, my son. The room shifts. This is a huge, uh, I think it's a slash TG uh, Fallout uh, TLDR green text thing. I'm going to be doing for no maybe another video or so on this one. But uh, if you like this video and others like them, be sure to like and subscribe to Nick Beardia and click the bell icon so you know when the next video is coming out through the week. So until our cubes align again, watch out for the skinnies. Keep your turd spear held tight when the asshole shows up. And I'll see y'all next time.